These red herrings are popping up left and right. They're all secret plots, okay? Like the thing with the the MAGA, with the American Indian, and you had the brother, I think his name is uh, Ephraim. Chief Ephraim, right. And by their secret plots. By their secret plots. And popular persuasions. That's their media. Their media is a popular persuasion. Why? Because most people believe what they see on TV, what they see on the news. I believe it. Don't. Read it again. And by their secret plots and popular persuasions and commotions. They try to stir up a commotion to get people against us. Go ahead. They hinder the finishing of the building all the time that King Cyrus lived. So they were hindered from building for the space of two years until the reign of Darius. Guess what? They're not going to hinder this. This is going to keep going all on. Everybody understand that? It's a crisis time. This. The book of Isaiah, chapter 58, and verse 1. Uh -huh. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgressions and the house of Jacob their sins. So it's our job to show God's people, which are the people of Jacob that you, that you see right here, their transgressions and their sins. So you one of my sisters. It's two things I want you to understand. I want you to understand why you're an Israelite. We're going to hit that real quick before we get hit the law. I want you to understand. Has anybody ever told you you're an Israelite before? No? Okay. Uh, so when I ask you your nationality, if you tell me that I'm an Israelite from the tribe of Benjamin, I want you to understand why. All right? Uh, so this is Deuteronomy 28. So this is a book that was written specifically to the Israelites. These people you see on this sign right here. And I want you to tell me what nation of people matched this description. All right? All right, verse 15. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 15. Uh -huh. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments. So the Bible says if the Israelites didn't listen to God and observe and do all of his commandments, read, and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So the Bible says if the Israelites didn't keep his commandments, that what was going to happen to them? She said, can you repeat it? That all these what? That all these curses. All these what? So curses would do what? Shall come upon thee and overtake thee. All right, so if the Israelites didn't keep God's commandments, they would have what on them? Curses. Curses. And those curses would overtake them, meaning that they would destroy that nation of people. I'm going to share with you some of the curses you read about in Deuteronomy 28. And I want you to tell me who fits that description. All right. Give me verse 16, 17, and then jump down to 42. Verse 16. Cursed shall be thy city. So who, when you, when you think of the word curse, you're thinking about good stuff or bad stuff? Bad, right? So the Bible says what? Cursed shalt thou be in the city. Who lives in the cursed or bad parts of the city? Who? You say, what kind of people? Our people. Our people, right? Read. And cursed shalt thou be in the field. Who is in these fields right here? In a cursed or bad condition? Our people, right? Read. Cursed shall be thy basket and thy store. The grocery store is right here. What's that, Super Fresh? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You ever shopped at like Kroger? I'm not from out right here. Where are you from? Georgia. Y'all got, uh, what they got in Georgia? They got, uh, Harris Teams, I think. what's that popular grocery store? Publix. 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 Y'all got Publix, right? Publix, is that a good grocery store? Sorry. What's a good grocery store down there? Like in the rich people's neighborhood? I see Trader Joe's. Okay, Trader Joe's. And what do you see in the hood? Not as good stuff, right? So the scriptures say, curse going to be your basket, curse going to be your store. So the places that you shop are going to have bad produce, bad food compared to the places of the people that's oppressing you. Keep reading, verse 42. Verse 42. 
Thou shalt, I'm sorry, all thy trees and fruit of thy land. Verse 43. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high, and thou shalt come down very low. So the scripture says one of the curses of these people is that they will be high at one point in time in the past, but they will come down very low. Is there any nation of people that you would say that's lower excuse me, than our people? We at the bottom. We're the last hire. We're the first fired. We get the knee on the neck. They want to experiment with the vaccines on us. We like less than dogs to them. If you kill a dog, you go into jail. You kill a nigga, you get paid leave in an investigation. There's nobody lower on the totem pole than our people. Keep reading. Verse 43. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high, and thou shalt come down very low. He shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. So you say you're 20 years old. Have you ever gotten a loan before? Credit card, anything like that? Okay, but you do understand who who gives out money. That's banks, right? Who runs the banks? Is it our people? Okay, but we go to the banks to try to get money. So the Bible says what? He shall lend to thee. So he being your oppressor shall lend to you. Thou shalt not lend to him. So our people not doing the lending. Our people are doing, they're, they're receiving the money. You follow me? Keep reading. He shall be the head, and thou shalt be the tail. So we'll be the bottom on the totem pole. Keep reading. Verse 45. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee, and shall pursue thee, and overtake thee, till thou be destroyed. Because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to keep his commandments and his statutes, which he commanded thee. So the Bible says that the curses will pursue you, so it don't matter if you go to Georgia, whether you go to New York, Cali, Africa, Europe, our people in the same condition everywhere. Right. That's what the Bible says. But I'm going to show you the main curse to help you understand that these people that you read on the sign are our people. Verse 68. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 68. Oh, give me the sign and the wonder first. I'm sorry. Verse 46. And they shall be upon thee. So when it says they, it's talking about the curses. So it says, the curses shall be upon you, read, for a sign and for a wonder. So if I'm trying to figure out which one of those buildings over there is McDonald's, I've never been there before. How do I know? Okay, I might ask, and they're probably going to tell me, how am I going to identify it over there? No, no, like how am I going to know that that building right there is McDonald's and not the other one next to it? The what? The McDonald's, the McDonald's sign. That's the key word, the sign. So the, the sign is identifying the building, right? So the Bible says, what about the sign? And they shall be upon thee for a sign. So the Bible says the curses, all these things that we read about, cursed in the city, cursed in the field, he's going to lend to you. You're not going to lend to him. He's going to get up very high. You're going to be very low. He's going to be the head. You're going to be the tail. All these are a sign, Read. And for a wonder, and upon thy seed forever. Right, verse 68. Verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. So biblically, when you read the word Egypt, it's talking about bondage. You say you're not real familiar with the Bible, right? Okay, so there's a story that you read about. You ever heard of Moses? Okay, so Moses led our ancestors out of Egypt. We were slaves in Egypt. He led us out of Egypt. Read that. The book of Exodus, chapter 20, and verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. That's that word again. Out of the house of bondage. Out of the house of bondage. Giovanni, what's another word for bondage? Locked up, okay. I like that. Give me something else. Bound together. My sister right here, what's another word for bondage? If you're in bondage, what are you? Um, captivity. Captivity, I like that word. What's another easy word? It starts with an S. Slave. There you go. There you go. So when the scriptures is talking about you will be brought into Egypt, read that verse again in Exodus 20. Yes, sir. So Exodus, Exodus. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 2. Well, Exodus chapter 20 and verse 2. Uh -huh. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. So my brother and my sisters, Egypt was the house of bondage, meaning the house of what? The house of slavery. The house of slavery. So what we're explaining right now is slavery was in the Bible a long time ago. Right. 
The transatlantic slave trade was in the Bible a long time ago, and we're reading about it right now. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. So when the scripture says the Lord is going to bring us into Egypt again, what is it saying? Bring us into what? Slavery. God is going to bring us into slavery again with what? With ships. With what? With ships. Now earlier I asked you how did we get here? And you said what? Ships. 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 Us coming to here to the Americas, North, Central, South America on slave ships. Right. On cargo ships and we were the cargo as slaves. Right. Was Bible prophecy. Right. right. That's how we know that our people that came here on slave ships are the Israelites according to the Bible. Yeah, that's, right. Right. that's right. No other nation of people was cursed in the city, cursed in the field, last hired, first fired, don't lend out any money, always got to go to the bank to get the money, serve their oppressors for everything. Every Their shirts say, don't say made by you. Pants don't say made by you. Uh, the, the, the bottled water that we drink wasn't bottled at a source owned by you. Right. And no other nation of people has gone through all that and come to America on ships to serve as slaves. Right. Right. That's how you know that the biblical Israelites are the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. That's right. Right. We're the only ones that fit the description. That's right. The Bible said these curses will be assigned upon the real Israelites to help them identify who they are. Right. Right. So the same way the golden arches identify that there's a McDonald's, the people that went into slavery by way of ship, live in the ghettos, always on section eight, baby mamas, baby daddies, all these things are curses to identify that these people are the Israelites according to the Bible. Right. Right. Now go back to Baruch chapter four. So the question is why did these things happen to us? What made God move himself to send us on slave ships? Why, why did that happen to us? Why did that didn't happen to the white men? Why didn't we own the boats and take them as captives? They don't even know how to wash their hands after they go to the bathroom. How, right. we, how we end up as slaves and right. not them? Right. Give me verse 6. The book of Baruch, chapter 4 and verse 6. So the Bible answers that question on why was the black man, woman, and child, native man, woman, and child, Hispanic man, woman, and child, taken as slaves by the white man that we call our savior. Read. Ye were sold to the nations, not for your destruction. So we weren't sold to be destroyed. God didn't want to wipe us off the face of the earth. What did he want? But because ye moved God to wrath, ye were delivered unto your enemies. We moved God to wrath because he told us, daddy told us don't do these things, children. But we chose to do those things anyway. That's right. Daddy said, don't eat shrimp. I didn't create that for you to eat. I created it to keep the water clean and clear so you could look down miles deep and see the bottom. But the Antichrist, the one that's completely against God and everything that he created, said, you know what? Shrimp, lobster, crab, that's a delicacy. Matter of fact, I'm going to jack the price up more on those things to show you that it's valued higher and you, you need to buy more crabs. Buy more shrimp. Brad, buy more lobster. That's what the Bible says. Read. Verse 7. For ye provoked him that made you by sacrificing unto devils and not to God. So we sacrifice to devils. We're supposed to be sacrificing to the Most High God. When do we sacrifice to God? On the new moons. On the Sabbath days. On the Passover. But we didn't want to do any of those days. We wanted to change from, from celebrating the Passover. We wanted to celebrate Easter. We want to celebrate Christmas. We want to celebrate July 4th. We want to celebrate uh, uh, Thanksgiving. God said don't do any of those things. Our women wanted to wear pants. The Bible says don't do those things. So I'm going to give y'all a couple laws and then we got to go ahead and get out of here. So my brother right here, I'm going to go ahead and give you a law. One that you're keeping already, but I want to encourage you to keep keeping it, all right? You see anything, uh, what's in common with all these men out here and their faces? We all got a beard. That's right. Now we don't got a beard for fashion. Right. We got a beard for commandment's sake. That's right. Because God requires that we have that on our face. Right. Read. 
The book of Leviticus chapter 21 and verse 5. They shall not make baldness upon their head. So the Bible says, God said specifically to us men, you shall not make baldness upon your head. If you're, if you're, if you're balding, that's fine for that spot. But the rest of the place where hair grows, you can't shave that off. Right. You can't make baldness on your head. Read. Neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard. So you can't shave off the corner of your beard. Be careful with those designs. If, you're, if your beard grow down here, they need to be lining it up down there. Right. They can't cut it up to here. If your beard grow high, you can't have them cut it down low for fashion and design sake. Right. Don't mar, don't destroy the line that God gave you on your beard. That's right. You follow me? All praises to the Most High God. The, who, who is this to you? It's your girl? All right. That's supposed to be your wife. Right. That's right. Y'all right. having sex? Yeah, you smirking. She said, yeah. All right. This is what the Bible says about a man and a woman having sex together. Teach. When, when men and women have sex together and don't apply this commandment right here, it creates fatherless children. Teach. It creates baby mamas, it creates baby daddies. That's right. But the Bible fixes all that and it restores and rebuilds our nation so that we can rule the planet. Right. That's right. We can't rule the planet with girlfriends and boyfriends. Right. Right. We can't rule the planet as baby daddies and baby mamas. Right. Right. We can't rule the planet with little boys not growing up with their father to teach them how to be men. That's right. right. That's how we get ruled over. That's not how we rule over. Read the book of Exodus, chapter 22, and verse 16. Uh -huh. And if a man entice a maid, so you the man, she's the maid. You entice her, you spit game to her, whatever your game is. Some brothers got shoe game, some brothers got they light skin, they got light skin game, some brothers got talk game. You know, you could talk real good, whatever your game is, you use it to entice women. Right. Some brothers got they money game on point, they car game on point, whatever your game is. You use it to entice women to attract them. Read. And if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed, she's not she's not promised to another man, neither is she married to another man. Read. And lie with her, has sex with her, he shall surely endow her to be his wife. He must marry that woman. That's right. right. That's how you fix our communities. The biggest problem in our communities is the black man and black woman not being together. That's, That's right. right. When I say together, I ain't talking about, oh, when we gon' when we gonna make it official. Official is marriage. Right, right. Not that's bae. Nah. Nah, the only bae is your wife. Right, right, right. And I ain't talking about wifey. Oh, she wifey material. Nah. If you wifey material, you got to get married. That's right. That's right. You need that paperwork. And then she bears children for you and guides the house while you provide and protect the house. Right. That's your job as a man. You got to step into that position. Women control the sex, men control the marriage. Right. She'll give up the sex all day, but she can't get married until you say, all right, all right, yeah, let's go ahead and do this thing. That's right. But marriage is the power in the community, not the sex. Right. This whole world has been turned upside down. We idolizing a vagina Teacher. that was created to serve us. It was created to make us feel good, to minister to us, not for us to worship. What we got next? Give me Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Yes, sir. This is for my sisters right here. Check this out. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 5. Says, I see you got a you got a long shirt on. Do you what, what other articles of clothing do you wear? So my sister over there, you still with us? I saw you had walked off. Yeah, I gotta go. You gotta go. Well, check this out before you go. I'm gonna go ahead and read that. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. The Bible says that women shouldn't wear what pertains to men. What that mean? I like what you was about to say. What'd you say? No pants. No pants. No, no pants. And you, you see how you like your, your face dropped, like your countenance changed, like, huh? If your ancestors was looking at you, they would be looking at you like that. That's right. I guarantee you your great grandmother never wore pants. No, no. When we got brought here on slave ships, none of our sisters wore pants. Right. That's a new thing in the earth, and God's not pleased with it. Right. That's right. Read that again. Verse five: The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. And y'all see this guy right here, this white devil right here? He lies to you and tells you that pants won't in the Bible. Pants always been in the Bible. Right. Right. You read about Daniel and his brothers. They got rounded up. 
And it says, and they're hosing. I think that's like Daniel 4. 3.21. Daniel 3 and 21. Go ahead and bring that out for him real quick. They were always for the men. They were never for the women. My right. sisters, y'all got to repent from that. Right. Read that. The book of Daniel, chapter 3, verse 21. Then these men were bound in their coats, their hosing. So these men had hosing on. This is just an ancient term for pants. The things that she wearing now, like the, the sweatpants and all that, these would be considered hosing back in the day. Right. And their hats and their other garments that were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. And these were all men that we read about. So when the scriptures say a woman shouldn't wear that which pertains to a man, you, a man, y'all sisters, y'all gotta repent from that. Y'all gotta stop wearing that. All it's doing is making you wanna uh, be like Steve Harvey and think like a man. You dress like a man, you act like a man, you think like a man. We need y'all to be women, be delicate, be soft, right. be quiet. That's what we need out of our sisters. Go back to that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22, verse 5. Uh -huh. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Anybody, anybody ever seen in the department store a man's dress? You have? That's an abomination. Right. Have you seen women's pants before? You been, in, you been in a department store, Walmart, women's section, pants? That's an abomination. God is not pleased with any of those things. Right. And our sisters got to repent. This is the last scripture. We read it earlier, and then we're going to wrap it up. Um, uh, Matthew 4, 17. So I just gave y'all a few examples of things that you got to repent from. A few examples of things that you got to repent from. Because there's a kingdom of heaven at hand for my sisters, Giovanna. My brother, my sister right here. But you got to turn from your ways of sin and learn to keep God's laws. Read. The book of Matthew, chapter 4, verse 17. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And that's the message that we have for all my sisters and my brothers. You got to repent from your ways of sin. You got to go through this Bible, find all the thou shouts and thou shalt nots. Make sure you're not doing the nots and make sure you're doing the thou shouts. That's right. And it's a kingdom of heaven at hand for you. Matthew 26. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.